Is your system infected with malware? Maybe it's running slower than usual or having issues booting. Perhaps you're getting pop-ups or your browser is acting strange and taking you to random websites when you open it. These can all be signs of underlying malware and sometimes Windows itself or your locally installed endpoint protection can't always catch this malware. It's a great idea to scan for malware outside of the booted operating system. So what does that mean? Well, stick around and I'm going to show you step by step how you can do just that by yourself without paying expensive services such as Geek Squad. Stop paying Geek Squad, by the way. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the series Stop Paying Geek Squad. And if you haven't guessed it already, today's topic is malware. Maybe you think you have a virus. Maybe you know you have a virus and you're scared of it. You don't even want to turn the computer on. You don't want to boot in there. Maybe they're going to hack you and get your passwords and all your crypto or whatever the case is. I can't blame you. It can be a scary thing if you're not, you know, tech savvy. Don't worry. I got you covered. In today's demo, you don't even need to boot into your operating system. You can leave that completely off and we're going to boot from a USB flash drive and we're going to run some amazing free tools to scan for and get rid of any unwanted malware on your system. And in today's demonstration, I am using the Ultimate USB version 2.1, which is an amazing Swiss Army knife of tech support. It's got all kinds of stuff on there, 13 categories, 50 bootable environments. I won't go over it all. It's tagged here. I highly recommend at least checking it out. If you don't have it or you don't want to pick it up today, not a problem at all. Make your own bootable USB and follow along either way. All right, so if you guys haven't heard of an iCar file, this is a good way to emulate malware. You're just going to download this test file. Uh, you don't need to do this unless you want to follow along with this part of the process as well. Feel free to do so. I just want to emulate like my system has been infected without actually infecting it for obvious reasons. All right, so iCar.org, download, and I'm going to scroll down here and I'll grab the uh, zip file. I've already downloaded it and extracted it. So this here is an iCar file. It's a very small file, uh, has a .com extension, and it's just something that pretty much all, as far as a malware scanner, should detect this file as malicious. Okay, so now that we've got that on there, we're gonna go ahead, restart this computer, and then instead of booting back into Windows, we're gonna tap the boot key on our keyboard. I'm using a virtual machine today, so it's gonna be escape. But a lot of computers, or all computers, have their own boot key, obviously, depending on the manufacturer. Like, for example, HP is a lot of times F9. If you're running a Dell, it could be F10, F12. Just Google it, look it up, or ask me. I'll be able to help you out. But uh, just know that when it's booting up, you need to tap that boot shortcut key, and that'll bring you to the boot menu. I'll see you when we get there. All right, so I tapped the boot key as we were restarting there, and I'm brought to the boot menu where I will select the USB device. I password protect these, so I'm going to put that in here, see if I can talk and type. First try, not bad. And this is the Ultimate USB version 2.1. Again, 13 different categories. I won't go through all of this stuff, but just know that it's jam-packed with just about everything you'd ever need for troubleshooting, repairing, hacking, forensic investigation, so on and so forth. For today though, we're going to head into the WinPE environments and I'm going to select my favorite at this point which is OnkTech version 12. And I'll go ahead and boot the full version which only requires 2 gigs of RAM. Okay, now that the WinPE environment is booted up, we are met with a PSTAR dock here on the right. You could also browse through these categories from the start menu. But today we are focused on antivirus since this video is covering how to remove malware. So I'm going to pin down the antivirus and for today's purposes there are five different solutions here. I'm going to go with Trend Micro House Call. Alright, so we're going to do settings and I'm going to do a custom scan today and select the Windows C drive. Now, right now I'm booted into the USB drive, so this is going to be seen as the removable media here, but we want to scan the underlying operating system of Windows. So just make sure you select the right drive, click OK, and then go ahead and start scanning.
All right, and there you have it, folks. The scan has finished, and of course, it did find our ICAR test files. It's noted as a virus here with a high risk, and we have different actions to either fix or ignore. So, of course, we're going to fix. Click that. Once you're done, you will be greeted with some kind of like advertisements if you want to have additional services here. But we are done. We fixed our problems. So you can scan again if you'd like. Not a bad idea if you're working in a real world scenario. Once you remove the threats, you may want to scan again. For this demonstration, we are done here. So we'll go ahead and reboot. All right, the system is booted back up. We'll go to downloads where our ICAR file was located and just like that there's nothing in the folder at this point the recycle bin is empty so that file has been pretty well nuked. So that is how you would scan for and delete or fix repair I should say any type of malware issues that you may encounter on your system. Remember guys it's important to address these issues and even if you think you've addressed them with something like Defender, or maybe you're running Avast, Avera, Bitdefender, whatever you're running on your PC, yeah, you can try to attack them like that while the Windows operating system is booted up and running. However, I always recommend anytime you either suspect or know that there's some type of malware on your system, run a pre-boot scan. And what I mean by that is exactly what we just did. So before you even boot the Windows operating system, boot into something off of a flash drive, launch that environment, and then make sure you can see the underlying Windows operating system that's not booted and scan it that way. Uh, that eliminates the likelihood or the chance that any type of malware can kind of hide itself once Windows is booted up. There are certain types of malware out there that can do that. They can get embedded very deep, get the hooks in, and your system's malware detection may not see it. So always a good idea to go that extra step and scan with the solution outside of your system being booted. And obviously, if your system is so hosed up from malware that it won't even boot, this will be your only option. But either way, I still recommend going the pre-boot route when scanning for malware. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and if it was, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and click on that thumbs up button. It actually costs you exactly zero pennies, so it really helps the channel out, and like I said, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully you guys are really enjoying the series Stop Paying Geek Squad. I am passionate about trying to help people. You know, it's, it's very disturbing and a little bit disgusting to see people throw money away all the time for very simple problems. That's not to say you should never take your computer to a repair shop. You know, there are times when you may need to do that depending on your skill level, but there are so many common problems out there that, you know, have tons of free tools and tons of folks like myself and others on the internet that would make videos or, you know, correspond with you back and forth to try to help you out.